Uzbekistan, a land steeped in rich history and vibrant culture, has long been a mystery to many. Nestled in the heart of Central Asia, this gem of a country holds within its borders a treasure trove of surprises waiting to be uncovered. From majestic architecture to mouth-watering cuisine, there's something enchanting about Uzbekistan that captivates the senses and leaves a lasting impression. In this video, we're going to delve deep into the heart of Uzbekistan and uncover some surprising facts that will leave you in awe. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed as we embark on a journey to unravel the mysteries of life in Uzbekistan. Number one, it's a double landlocked country. Uzbekistan nestled snugly in Central Asia, bordered by five landlocked countries. That's right, count them. Kazakhstan to the north, Kyrgyzstan to the northeast, Tajikistan to the southeast, Afghanistan to the south, and Turkmenistan to the southwest. Uzbekistan isn't just your run-of-the-mill landlocked nation. No, no. It's in a league of its own as one of the world's only doubly landlocked countries. That's right, you heard me correctly. It's not just landlocked once, but twice over. How's that for a unique geographical quirk? So, what exactly does it mean to be doubly landlocked? Well, it's like this. For Uzbekistan to dip its toes in the ocean, you'd have to embark on a journey crossing not one, but two landlocked countries. Imagine the adventure. And guess what? The only other member of this exclusive club is Liechtenstein, nestled in the heart of Europe. Wrap your head around that for a moment. In a world where shorelines seem just a stone's throw away, Uzbekistan stands as a testament to the diversity of our planet's geography. It's a reminder that even within landlocked borders, there's a world of discovery waiting to unfold. Number two, Russia ruled Uzbekistan for nearly two centuries. It all began in the latter half of the 19th century when Russia, expanding its empire, conquered vast swathes of Central Asia. This region, known for its diverse Turkic languages and cultures, fell under Russian dominance, forming what was then called Russian Turkestan. Picture this, a land where the echoes of ancient Silk Road caravans met the advancing footsteps of Russian soldiers. Fast forward to 1925, when the Soviet Union tightened its grip over the area, transforming it into the Uzbek Soviet Socialist Republic. Under Soviet rule, Uzbekistan experienced both progress and hardship as it navigated through the turbulent waters of political change and economic transformation. But it wasn't until the dawn of the 1990s that Uzbekistan would finally break free from the shackles of Soviet control. In 1991, amidst the crumbling of the Soviet Union, Uzbekistan declared its independence, marking a pivotal moment in its history. Yet, the journey towards self-governance wasn't without its challenges. Enter Islam Karimov, a figure who loomed large over Uzbekistan's political landscape for nearly three decades. Islam Karimov, an authoritarian leader, held the reins of power from 1989 until his passing in 2016. His tenure was marked by both progress and controversy as Uzbekistan sought to find its footing in the tumultuous post-Soviet era. From economic reforms to crackdowns on dissent, Karimov's legacy is as complex as the nation he governed. Number three, cotton is known as white gold in Uzbekistan. Cotton, also known as white gold, plays a significant role in Uzbekistan's economy. In fact, it accounts for a staggering 17% of the country's exports. But what exactly makes cotton so valuable here? Each year, Uzbekistan produces around 1 million tons of cotton fiber, making it the eighth largest producer and the 11th largest exporter in the world. That's a lot of cotton. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite its profitability, the cotton industry in Uzbekistan has a controversial side. Human rights groups have criticized Uzbek authorities for decades for their practices in the industry. Shockingly, around 1 million students, government employees, and even doctors are forced by the government to pick cotton each year. This practice has sparked widespread condemnation from international organizations. It's a harsh reality that much of the cotton picked under these conditions ends up in the global supply chains and on the shelves of our favorite high street shops. But despite the controversies, Uzbekistan remains a major player in the global cotton market. With annual exports reaching 700,000 to 800,000 tons, it plays a significant role in meeting the world's demand for this versatile fiber. Number four, 
one of the world's largest open pit gold mines, introducing the Muruntau Gold Mine. This colossal pit stretches across approximately 3.35 kilometers by 2.5 kilometers and plunges to depths of at least 560 meters. Imagine the sheer scale of it. Discovered back in 1958, this behemoth of a mine didn't begin commercial operations until 1967. Since then, it has been a cornerstone of Uzbekistan's economy, contributing significantly to the nation's wealth and prosperity. The Muruntau gold mine boasts the second highest level of annual gold production worldwide, churning out a staggering 66 tons of the precious metal each year. That's no small feat. In 2020 alone, Uzbekistan flexed its gold-producing muscles, adding a whopping 101.6 tons to its tally. That's more than just impressive. It cements Uzbekistan's position as the world's 12th largest gold producer. Gold isn't just a commodity for Uzbekistan. It's a vital pillar of its economy. Accounting for around 44% of the country's exports, gold plays a pivotal role in driving growth and development. Number five, world's worst environmental disasters happened in Uzbekistan. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union embarked on an ambitious project to divert the rivers feeding into the Aral Sea, all in the name of agricultural expansion. Their goal? To transform the arid desert landscape into fertile farmland, particularly for cotton and other crops. And indeed, their efforts bore fruit. Vast stretches of desert bloomed into fields of green, sustaining livelihoods and feeding communities. But at what cost? As the waters of the Aral Sea dwindled, so too did its once thriving fisheries. Entire communities that depended on fishing for their livelihoods found themselves stranded on dry land, their way of life disappearing before their eyes. But the tragedy doesn't end there. The dried up bed of the Aral Sea has unleashed a new menace upon the region, toxic dust laden with agricultural chemicals. This dust not only poses a threat to public health, but also wreaks havoc on the local environment. And let's not forget the impact on the region's climate. The Aral Sea acted as a natural regulator, moderating local weather patterns. Without it, winters have become harsher, summers hotter, and the once balanced ecosystem thrown into disarray. But amidst this tale of woe, there is hope. Efforts are underway to revive the Aral Sea, from conservation initiatives to international collaborations. While the road ahead may be long and arduous, it's heartening to see the world come together to right the wrongs of the past. Number six, the world's largest open air bazaar. Picture this, a vibrant maze of stalls stretching as far as the eye can see, filled with a kaleidoscope of colors, scents, and sounds. From the crackle of spices to the chatter of vendors, Chorsu Bazaar is a sensory feast unlike any other. But what sets Chorsu Bazaar apart isn't just its size, it's the incredible diversity of goods on offer. Need some juicy tomatoes for tonight's salad? Check. Craving a taste of authentic Uzbek plov? You'll find it here, simmering in giant cauldrons. And let's not forget about the treasures of Uzbek craftsmanship. From intricate ceramics to vibrant textiles, Chorsu Bazaar is a paradise for anyone seeking a piece of Uzbek culture to take home. But what truly makes Chorsu Bazaar special is the lively atmosphere. It's not just a place to shop, it's a melting pot of cultures and traditions, where locals and travelers alike come together to share stories, haggle over prices, and forge connections that span continents. Chorsu Bazaar is more than just a market, it's the beating heart of Tashkent. Every day, people from all walks of life come here to buy, sell, and trade. It's a way of life. So, whether you're a seasoned traveler or just looking for a taste of the exotic, make sure to put Chorsu Bazaar at the top of your bucket list. Trust me, it's an experience you won't soon forget. Number seven, home to some of the world's oldest cities. Meet Samarkand and Bukhara, the timeless treasures of Uzbekistan. These cities aren't just old, they're ancient, with a history that spans over two millennia. Imagine walking through streets that have witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the ebb and flow of trade caravans along the legendary Silk Road. Samarkand and Bukhara were more than just cities. They were bustling hubs of trade, culture, and learning during the Silk Road era. Merchants from distant lands mingled with scholars, artisans, and travelers, creating a vibrant tapestry of diversity that still resonates today. But what makes these cities truly remarkable? Well, 
It's not just their age, but the enduring legacy they've left behind. From the majestic domes and minarets that adorn the skyline to the bustling bazaars filled with exotic spices and treasures, every corner of Samarkand and Bukhara tells a story of bygone days. And here's the best part. Despite their ancient roots, these cities are anything but stuck in the past. Modern amenities blend seamlessly with historical charm, offering visitors a unique blend of old world allure and contemporary comfort. But perhaps the most captivating aspect of Samarkand and Bukhara is the warmth and hospitality of its people. Whether you're savoring a steaming cup of chai in a bustling tea house or getting lost in the labyrinthine streets of the old city, you'll find yourself welcomed with open arms and genuine smiles. Number eight, the country has slow internet. Did you know that Uzbekistan is known for having slower internet speeds compared to many other countries? Yes, you heard that right. While you might be accustomed to lightning fast connections elsewhere, browsing the web, streaming videos, and staying connected on social media might be a bit slower here. But fear not, there's always a solution. Despite the slower speeds, there are some telecommunication companies in Uzbekistan that offer relatively better internet services. So, if you're planning a trip here, it's a smart idea to grab yourself a local SIM card. With a local SIM card in hand, you'll have access to a more reliable internet connection during your stay. Whether you're checking emails, posting updates, or simply staying connected with loved ones back home, having a local SIM can make your digital experience in Uzbekistan much smoother. So, remember, fellow travelers, while Uzbekistan's internet speeds may not be the fastest, there are options available to ensure you stay connected during your visit. Embrace the slower pace, immerse yourself in the rich culture and history of this beautiful country, and don't forget to grab that local SIM card for a more enjoyable online experience. Number nine, freedom of the press doesn't exist. Now you might have heard about the vibrant landscapes of Uzbekistan or the remarkable architecture of its ancient cities. But did you know that the concept of freedom of the press takes on a whole new meaning in this Central Asian nation? In Uzbekistan, the media landscape isn't exactly what you'd call diverse. Picture this, you have two choices, state-controlled media or, well, nothing. Take the case of Gulnara Karimova, once a prominent figure in Uzbek business and politics. While Gulnara Karimova was making headlines for all the wrong reasons, the press seemed to be singing her praises. It's like having a spotlight on someone's misdeeds, yet the media casts shadows to hide them. You see, it was common knowledge that Karimova's activities weren't exactly above board, but the press? They were busy polishing her image, making her seem like the nation's sweetheart. But here's the kicker. Even when leaked US communications revealed her as the most hated person in the country, the media continued to shield her. Fast forward to 2013, when Uznews.net, a news site daring to challenge the status quo, published pieces distancing President Karimov from his daughter's shenanigans. And guess what? Soon after, the site was silenced by the Uzbek authorities. Imagine a scenario where Chelsea Clinton, a public figure in the United States, faced similar accusations. Can you picture the uproar, the relentless coverage by the press? But in Uzbekistan, it's a different story altogether. News of such magnitude being whispered in secret, shared through clandestine letters, or disclosed in hushed meetings with lawyers. This, my friends, is the stark reality of the media landscape in Uzbekistan. And let's not forget the brave souls who dared to speak truth to power, only to find themselves behind bars. Four journalists, still languishing in Uzbek jails for daring to criticize the state. So the next time you hear about Uzbekistan, remember this surprising fact. Freedom of the press, as we know it, doesn't quite exist there. Number 10, a lost city. The size of Monaco was literally just discovered. So what's the scoop? Let me break it down for you. The story begins in the heart of Central Asia, in Uzbekistan, a land steeped in history and culture. Now imagine this, since 2011, a collaboration between Chinese and Uzbek archaeologists has been underway, tracing the ancient Silk Road routes. And guess what? They've struck gold. Enter Ming Tepe, nestled in the Fergana Valley. Initially believed to be a mere stopover point along the Silk Road, this unassuming site has turned out to be a treasure trove of history. Recent excavations have revealed something truly mind-boggling, a 2000 year old settlement. Now picture this. 
Back in the day, during the Han Dynasty, this bustling settlement was likely a hub of trade and commerce. The first century book of the later Han paints a vivid picture, describing Fergana, Daiwan, as a land brimming with exotic treasures, inhabited by a people with a lifestyle not too dissimilar from the Chinese. Keep your explorer hats on. This excavation could uncover the remnants of an ancient city belonging to the Yueji people. Who were they, you ask? Well, these nomadic tribes played a pivotal role in history, toppling the mighty Greco-Bactrian kingdom. Imagine standing on the very grounds where East met West for the first time. As we speak, the investigations continue, promising to unveil more secrets from the annals of time. Who knows what other wonders lie beneath the Earth's surface, waiting to be unearthed?